boys there to help. Um, they've offered again to help us paint uh, next week. And Pastor Yaku has fixed the, I see the, the men's toilet, the leak. And we just really appreciate each and every one of you guys that are in that home church. They are really working. And my desire is that every other home church will take their example and also begin to to do the practical things. And uh, then there is prayer meeting. What's a prayer meeting on Tuesday, 8 o'clock in the evening to 9 o'clock? And uh, when is the, new, the, the, the men and women's prayer meeting? The 25th. The 25th. Remember, the men go to Pastor Yaku's home, and the ladies will be here, and we will pray together. And then every Sunday before service, we, we start at 8 o'clock. We pray for about half an hour. Please don't miss any of the prayer meetings. Prayer goes where you cannot go. Amen. All right. I think that's about the... Oh, and the Bible College students work hard at it. I think next Saturday, coming Saturday, you're going to write your exam and then you're finished with first year. All right. And remember, we are always here afterwards. If you need prayer, if you need counsel, contact us. If you need to just get something off your chest, um, contact us. We'll make time for you. You are precious and we love you. Amen. Pastor Yaku, bless us. Almost like Tony Teach. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yes, God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just open in prayer first. Our Heavenly Father, in this morning we want to thank you that you are truly good and that we can experience your goodness. And Father, I ask in this morning that you will open your word to us once again. And Lord, that we will apply what you teach us. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will lead me in this word and that you will guide me. Open my mind to understand and give rightly what you have given me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm just putting down my fear with the palm. I'm not hiding behind you, Pastor. So, Pastor Yanni, so thank you so much for the opportunity that you gave me to bring the word in this morning and trust that the Lord will speak to each one of our hearts in this morning. Can you all still see me? Should I move it this side? Hello. <laughs> all right, we're going to start by reading in Matthew 7 from verse 15. He says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. It says, Beware of these false prophets. You know what? Many times, even in this church, we've experienced that, that people come in, but their motive only was destruction. They come in and they create a division. They come here and they spread words against the pastor. They spread words against each other. Have you seen this? Have you done that? Have you noticed? And they only are there to, to sow discord. And whenever we have somebody in our midst, even the ones that have been here for years, we must ask ourselves, what is the intention of that heart? What is the motives of each heart? Are we... Am I that ravenous wolf to come to destroy a church? Now, but God brings us together in unity as a body in Christ to function as a whole. Amen? But in verse 16, he says, You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Sometimes it's important, and I think in every church it's important that all our members should actually spend time together even outside of church services. It's easy to come in on a Sunday morning and put your Sunday face on. 
And everybody see this lovely, lovely da dude, and everything is fair weather and good. But when you drink a coffee at their house, listen to their speech. Have you noticed? Have you observed? Isn't that bad? Isn't that against God's word? Or worse, you know what? Just spread another rumor. That's not even true. Then you will know them by their fruit. He says in 17, he says, Also, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, once again, by their fruits, you will know them. It is important that we see the fruit that people bear, because that will reveal what is in their heart. It is important that we ask God to lead us in all of this, so that we understand. And you know what? If you bear bad fruit, this scripture tells me that your end is in fire. Because you bring destruction to what God has established. So we must be careful of that. I know that a lot of times when I hear I, we preach about plants and fruit and how do you see that. And I'm not even a farmer. <laughs> but I want to shift your attention to Matthew 12 now. We're going to read almost the same thing, but I want to show you something else. Matthew 12, verse 33, it says, Either make the tree good, and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad, and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. There's hope yet. Amen. <laughs> hope for every one of us. Because you know what? Let, let me ask this. It says a good tree, you must make a tree good. Or you must make the tree bad. How can we do that in a person's life? Because the first part we read, it says a good tree cannot be a bad, uh, a bad fruit. So that means if we want to produce good fruit, we must make the tree good. How do I do this? First of all, you place a tree in the right environment. Uh, some succulents are made for the desert. And they will not flourish in the Amazon rainforest. They will actually fact just die there. Because they were not made for that environment. You know what? Even in our lives, God has called us to this church. You know that. And in this environment, we can thrive. We are part of this body of Christ. That's where we belong. God has called us here for a purpose. We have work to do here. And if or until God shows you directly something else and the rest of the body, then you move. But otherwise you do the work that God has called you for in this environment that God has called you to. We are here for a reason. And also, if I don't give a plant water, it will not grow. It will die. Even that succulent in the desert. If it doesn't receive water in some form, it will die. And what is our water? It's the Word of God. Because we get washed by the Word. Isn't that true? So that means we must stay in the Word of God in order to make our fruits grow. Make the fruit good. Because if you don't give it water, it will be Ugly fruit, let <laughs> me put it this way. Lemons that doesn't even grow, that doesn't even give flavor. Um, whatever fruit you give will not really be succulent fruit. It will be withered and small and sour. We know those, now. And also feeding. That means you must give it some feeding as well. 
Uh, I know that some trees grow in alkaline uh, soil and others in a little bit uh, as acidic soil and all that. And everyone wants a different kind of environment, different kind of ground that they need to, to grow as well. So that means it needs the right feeding. But also, you know what? The, the, the roots of this tree must be in that one and be able to absorb whatever is in there. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can absorb whatever God gives us that we can be make it our own and apply that to produce good fruit. And also one that we probably don't like, you need to prune a fruit tree. It needs pruning. That means if you see unfruitful branches, if you see branches that will just take up water and not produce the fruit that is needed, it needs to be pruned by an expert like God. <laughs> you ask me to go and prune a tree, I will kill it. So <laughs> but you know what? You get the experts and God is our expert. He knows what's good in your life. He knows what takes up unnecessary time. And when he speaks to us, it's time for us to get the prunes in and say, Lord, I allow you to prune me. Clean me. Judge me. When I look at this lovely, this, by the way, is an apple tree. It looks nice, nay. The problem with this is one is already two years old. Yeah, and uh, I'm afraid that if I'm going to plant it now, it will probably die. Because this is a fair weather plant. It has never seen a storm in its life. It has never experienced a full-blown winter in its life. No, because it's cuddled put nicely in the pot <laughs> in hell somewhere. But if I want to make this one bear fruit at some time, I must expose it to the elements, isn't it? Because a tree needs wind in order to fix its uh, roots, makes its branches strong, be able to face that. We, in our lives, believe it or not, we need storms. Because it grows character. It grows strength. Yes, it's easy to complain when you, we are in the storm. When we are facing difficulties in our lives. Remember the song that we sing. He never failed me. He never leaves me alone ever. He is my firm foundation Jesus Christ and then also a tree needs to go through seasons when I take a nice uh, peach tree during the winter it's a bunch of twigs isn't it <laughs> there's no leaves on it it's nothing it almost looks dead but even in that winter season when you see nothing if I uproot that plant during that season, just put it aside. So don't worry, rest. I will plant you back in uh, spring. It will die. So even if your season is dry and cold and miserable, we need to keep in the Word of God. We need to be anchored still there because that's our life source. But you know what's joyful? When September comes and you see all these blossoms, and you know, oh, this is going to be a good season. Because it kept, it will stand the seasons in the life. When you experience a dry season in your life, just remember God will never leave you. You are still anchored in Him. He provides you nourishment even in the winter times long as you are rooted within him and then also one important thing that a plant needs is light if i put this plant in a dark corner even if i give it all its nutrients and i water it every day every day apparently that kills plants too <laughs> but we need to be watered every day <laughs> you know what it will still die plants need light the light of ours is Jesus Christ. 
We need Jesus in our lives. Isn't that true? We need Jesus in our lives. We need the light of this world within us. It says that sin is committed in darkness. And it's actually afraid of the light because it will be exposed. I heard this one joke about a guy that drowned in a vat of wine. Well, it didn't happen immediately. They had to put him in, uh, they had to take him out there three times already. <laughs> you know what? The problem with sin is that people like it. And usually they will return. And it might cause his demise. Let us get out of darkness and go into his marvelous light. Let the light of God shine on us so that we can bear the fruit that we need. It says, carrying on in verse 34, it says, Brood of vipers. Now he's speaking actually there to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all that. And he says, How can you, being evil, speak good things? Because they were there in the synagogues Portray this godliness, religion. It's all good and looks lovely. And he says, but how can you even speak that? And he says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. There's a lovely Afrikaans saying, it says that, that the oorvloed van die heart loop die mond oor. So this is actually biblical, isn't it? Because what your heart is full that goes out of your mouth. So, if you want to know a person's heart, listen to what they say. I know a lot of people have a vast knowledge about everything. I mean, whatever conversation you strike up with them, man, they can, they can carry on, which is great. But then, certain people have a certain passion in their life. And the moment that you touch them, oh man, you will not get this guy silent. He will ramble on and ramble on and explain to you every detail, whatever has a passion about it. Have you experienced people like that already? Yeah, I have. <laughs> Sometimes it's a blessing, but then you know, but that's all that person knows is that one thing. It's scary enough. If it only it was Jesus, what a pleasure to listen to me. You know what? If you have Jesus in your heart, if Jesus is the center of your heart, guess what will flow out? The Word of God will flow out. Because he fill, if He fills your life, whatever you fill it with will come out. Isn't this the fruit that we want to produce? That means get the right, right nutrients in there. Get the Word of God in your life. Get God in your life. And then the right stuff will come out at the right time. That will nourish people when they need it most. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil things. Your treasure is actually fact what is important. What treasure do you hold on to? It says an evil person cannot bring good fruit, and he will only bring forth evil things. You think about the, the Antichrist. Perfect example of that. Maybe the extreme man. But he has got an evil heart. And that is what will come forth. That's what the people in this world will see. You, on the other hand, do you have the good treasure in your heart? When does it come out? And he says, But I say to you that for every idle word man speak, they will give account the day of judgment. If you want to take this back, that means what is the intention of your heart? Because what is in your heart will come out of your mouth. So that means you are just judged according to your heart. What is the intention of your heart? Because that's what you speak. That is what is in you that is just. 
Sometimes we do miss, make mistakes. Your deeds sometimes does flow them. But what is your heart? For God knows your heart. He knows what's within you, what's coming out. Because that will be judged. And he says, for by your words you will be justified. And also, by your words, you will be condemned. Now, when we look in our lives, maybe today even you see, God, but I'm not producing. What fruits am I actually making available to everyone around me? Am I producing the right fruit? Is there even hope for me? Or am I destined for the fire? I want to bring your attention back to Luke 13, from verse 6. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. That means that fig tree was planted in a good ground. And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of, the, of his vineyard, says, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and found none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? I think if I look in the garden, there's a small little fig tree there. And even that's bearing fruit right now. So now he's got this wonderful fig tree. And he says, for three years, I'm looking. Fix, 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 and nothing. Nothing. So he says, cut it down. He's just wasting valuable resources. This ground could have fertilized rather than the plants around it. The vineyard could have benefited more. But he answered and said to him, sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, cut it down. When God looks into your life, does He find the fruit that He look, that is looking for? I want to encourage you in this morning. The Lord says here that he's, take, he's giving us more time. In actual fact, God is investing more in us even now. He says, let me give you that special attention. Seek him. Let his word come into your life. You know what? We need prayer in order for anything. Even if I fertilize this tree, if it doesn't absorb it. It means nothing. <coughs> but even now how do I absorb this to pray if I read pray when I pray I establish a relationship with God I know who he is because he speaks to me and then I see what he tells me in his word and I start applying that when I pray I, I, I open myself to him and say Lord you know me you know my weaknesses, you know my strengths, and you know the kind of fruit that I'm bearing. We need to pray in order to absorb whatever God has installed in our lives. So if we want to bear fruit, let us keep in the Word of God, stay in prayer, that we can absorb whatever He plants into our lives. More than that, then we can apply bearing fruit, be blessed to everyone around us. I urge you to return to God. I urge you to make Him number one and give no other place for darkness. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, O Lord, in this morning we come to you Lord, you know us. You know the fruit that we are bearing. 
And I ask, Lord, that you will look into each one of our hearts. Look at the fruit that we are producing, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you will make us good trees so that we can bear good fruit. Have mercy on us this one more time. Thank you for the time that you are investing in us. Help us to use that. Going to your body. While we all have our eyes closed, I want to give you this invite and ask you when you look into your life in this morning, what does your fruit look like? You say that I am I'm, I'm fruitless. I want to change my life. And I want to recommit. And raise your hand. And we will pray together. But also in this morning, if you say that I have no Jesus in my life, I don't have it. I don't know if I have everlasting. Anybody in this, I ask you also to raise your hand. Pray for you. Father, I want to thank you for this message this morning. I ask you all that this will produce its fruit. Lord, as everyone look into their own lives this morning, reveal to them what needs to be done. Thank you that you spend that extra time fertilizing us so we can come to a place of optimal, good bearing lives. Have mercy on us, Lord. Help us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Think of that of the words of John the Baptist where he says, Bring forth fruit that meets repentance. So if